My name is Lorraine Johnson, and I am the principal investigator of MyLine Data, our big data patient registry, which has enrolled over 11,000 patients. And we're very excited today to announce that our first study using data from MyLine Data has just been published in the medical journal Healthcare. We encourage you to read the entire study. I'm just going to give you a brief overview of it. In this study, we looked at how individual patients vary in their response to treatment. Individualized patient care and personalized medicine requires understanding how patients vary in their response to treatment. Lots of other diseases have identified treatment responders, non-responders, slow responders, fast responders, but our study is the first one to do this in Lyme disease. And the reason it hasn't been done before is because identifying how different groups of patients respond to treatment requires large samples. And the largest trial funded by the National Institute of Health for patients with chronic Lyme disease enrolled just 129 people. So that's way too small a group to start to look for individual treatment variation. So instead, what they did was they lumped together all of the treatment responses, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and they said how patients responded on average. On average, they said, there wasn't much improvement from treatment. But most of us know that there is no average Lyme disease patient. Each patient is different. Let me give you an example of how treatment averages don't tell the whole story. A famous mathematician, Des McHale, explains it this way. The average person, he says, has one testicle and one breast. And we all know that that's simply ridiculous. You can't average a male and a female to say that the average person has one testicle and one breast. And it's the same thing in Lyme disease when you measure patient treatment response. If one person gets better and the other person gets worse after treatment, you can say that on average the treatment did nothing. But it did something very special for one of those patients. It made them better. So when we use an average treatment response to calculate treatment respects, uh, its success, we leave out a lot of information, important information for patients. So a better approach is to look at the variation and how different patients respond. Most patients with Lyme disease already know this. Some patients get better, others get worse, and some don't change with treatment. Treatment response variation is lost when individual responses are averaged. In our study, we included close to 4,000 patients. That's a very large sample. And it allows us to look at how treatment responses among patients vary. It's a preliminary study, so there's lots of work to be done to really sort of work with these concepts. But here's what we found. Most patients, 52%, responded positively to antibiotic treatment, and some, roughly a third, responded very well to treatment. These patients said that they felt moderately to a very great deal better after taking antibiotics. Very few said that they felt worse, only 12%. If I were a patient with chronic Lyme disease, which I was, by the way, I would want to know that roughly one-third of those in the sample were what we would call high treatment responders meaning that they reported that after taking antibiotics, their symptoms improved moderately to a very great deal. And this is the type of information that patients want to know. It's why we conducted the study. This is the first of many studies to be published using the data from MyLyme Data. So stay tuned. And if you're not enrolled in MyLyme Data, I encourage you to stop what you're doing and enroll. It's only by having patients pull their data that we will make progress in this disease. The URL for MyLyme Data is mylymedata.org.